So, today's lecture is on joining techniques, how the textile fabrics are joined together. Ultimately, the products that we want to make, many of them would need joinings. So, you have to join the pieces. Sometimes, you have to join two pieces, sometimes, you have to join multiple pieces in the layer form. So, what are the joining techniques which we have, we will discuss. So, there are basically two ways to join textiles. One is the mechanical way of joining and the other one is the bonding. So, what is mechanical way of joining? Within mechanical, we have entanglement as a mechanism to join textile material. It may not be fabrics always. Sometimes the product may be yarn also, sometimes the product may be a braided structure, it could be a twisted rope also. So, entanglement is one way of joining. The next one is hooks and loop. Then comes eyelet and lace. Then stitching. Then zipper. The last one is buttons or fasteners. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways to join the textile material mechanically. Some of them are very well known to most of you like entanglement as a means to join. Splicing technology, we are all familiar with many of you that we splice the spun yarn ends when they break. So, this is also a joining techniques or splicing of twisted ropes. This is also a kind of joining. The other is punching, or the needle punching that when you make non ovens, many a times we want to create entanglement between the fibers so that the fibers they hold each other. So, this entanglement is created through the needle punching process. We can join two non oven fabrics also, placing them one after the other, one on the top of the other and then punch them. That will also give, create entanglement and we join the two layers of non ovens. After that, we come to hook and loop. The example is Velcro. Most of us are familiar with Velcro. So, hook and loop and Velcro is the example of it. Most of you are familiar with Velcro. Here, two open polyamide tapes, one covered with fine hooks and the other with loops they are used. When they are pressed against each other as shown it here, they will adhere and they create strong resistance to shear. Whereas, they offer very little resistance if we want them to peel them out. So, peeling is easy, but is shearing is very difficult. Advantage is open and close easily even when wearing globes. When a person is wearing globes in a cold climate and he has to button or unbutton or he has to open the jacket that he is wearing, 
then if, if we have some kind of zipper or buttons, it will be difficult for the person because the fingers are covered by the globes. In that case, the zip, this velcro type of fastener will be very easy to operate. Zipper also may sometimes work fine, velcro is another advantage. because peeling is very, very easy. It is also very you know, useful for the garments that we make for old people. For them, buttoning is difficult. To push the button through the button hole is a difficult problem for them. So, for them also it will be very useful. The disadvantage is poor appearance due to being inflexible on lightweight garment because it is additional mass that we have to stitch to the garment and therefore, the part with which it is attached that part become little stiffer. That is the disadvantage with this and if we look at the use of this adjustable fastening closing cups ankles on waterproof garments suitable for disabled and old people and also very much in use in shoes. Then comes eyelet and laces. See eyelet and laces, in the eyelet we create holes in the fabric and we placed a hollow ring there, which we call eyelet. And then we can pass a less as it is shown in this case and join the two pieces. We can adjust the tension, we can open it, close it, tighten it, loosen it the way you want and the use is very much in shoes. It is also used in prongs or buckles on belts, ventilation and waterproof garments, emergence of drawstrings at waist or hood, lacing for fastening. So, there are many uses of this kind of you know, joining techniques. So, depending upon the applications, we can choose this kind of thing. See, shoeless and you know, sometimes this, are, this kind of joining may be difficult for the children's shoes. They find it difficult to pass the less through so many eyelets. So, for them, the easier way of closing or opening would be with the help of Velcro. So, most of the children's shoes you will find that velcro attachment is there. Then come jip fasteners. We are all familiar with jips, it is existing with us for so many years. And with the improvement of technology, the jip fasteners have become very, very reliable nowadays. So, jib fasteners are used also in many cases to join the two pieces of fabrics. The zipper consists of two strips of fabric, each one having tens or hundreds of specially shaped plastic or metal teeth as it is shown here. These are the teeth and this is the fabric piece. And there is a slider as shown it here, join the two sides by pushing the teeth together as it rides or runs over the two set of teeth. So, we are at very, most of us are very familiar with the zippers. This is very common in the trousers. Zippers also could be of two types. 
open end zipper. These zippers can be fully opened at the end with one side being able to be separated from the other side. And these are used in jackets, cardigans, coats, hoodies, sweatshirts in such kind of items. The other zipper type is close and zipper. That is if the zipper cannot be fully opened at the end and the zipper hubs will not come apart completely when unzipped. It is known as close end zipper and they are used in footwear, tents, luggage, handbags, bags. Their ends are closed, they will not be able to, do not want to separate them. So, this is how zipper, there are many types of zippers are there and depending upon the end use, the zipper, you know, the type of zipper that you use, you use that can change. So, what we are trying to give in this lecture is to give you a glimpse of the type of various fastening device that we have and which are in use in textile. The details about them will be available in some other textbooks. So, he needs to design something and he or she wants a zipper or some other techniques obviously to know more about them one has to refer to some standard textbooks where much more details will be available. Next comes buttons and start fastener. See buttons we are all familiar with, with buttons and button holes we can join two pieces of fabrics. This is very much there in most of our shirts that we wear and the start fasteners consist of a cap socket and a start post as shown in this diagram. They are used in denim jacket and in many other places this kind of start fasteners are used. That is you push this start into the socket and there will be a click sound, it will go and fit there and you need again you have to apply force to take them out. So, this is also a very old technique which is with us for a long time, the buttons and the start fasteners. So, these are the different techniques that we have and there could be many more uses of such kind of start fasteners. Now, we will go to stitch and seam because it is also a very old technique. Stitching is existing with us for a long time and this is also a means to join fabric pieces to give, to make a product. So, stitch, a little bit about stitch is shown here. There are different types of stitches. They are known as stitch type 101 variety, 201 variety, stitch type 301. Stitch type 101, it is formed with one needle thread which passes through the fabric and interlooped with itself on the other side of the fabric as shown it here. So, needle thread is one and it is interlooping with itself only. Then stitch type 201, where you see there are two different types of thread. This is one type and this is another type. Formed with two needle threads, which passes through the same perforations of the fabric from opposite directions without interlacing or interlooping. So, here it is just simply going, but there is no in this, if you concentrate on these areas, there is no interlooping or there is no interlacing. Then step type 301, where we find two different threads, but the difference is there is interlooping here. 
that is the difference. So formed with needle thread and bobbin threads. Loops of needle thread are passed through the fabric and interlaced with the bobbin thread. So needle thread is pulled back so that the interlooping is midway. The ideal placement of the loop is at the middle. If there is a variation in tension either in the bobbin thread or in needle thread, the placement of this loop may either go towards the surface or it can go towards the bottom part of the fabric. Then comes tips type 401, 504 and 601. 401 it is formed by needle thread and looper threads. Loops of needle threads are passed through the fabric and interloop with loops of the bobbin thread. Interlooping is drawn against the underside of the bottom fabric. So here the interlooping part is very close to the bottom part of the fabric. So that is how these stitches are made. The stitch type 504, here are three thread needles and looper thread and copper threads are used. So, so many needle thread, looper thread and copper threads are used. That means one you have needle threads, you have looper thread and you have cover thread. Three types of threads are used to produce such kind of loop and the last one is this type 601 form by three threads by two needle threads and one loop, looper thread. Loops of the needle threads are passed through the fabric and are looped with the looper thread of the underside. So anyway, there are different ways of basically interlooping the threads which are part of the, them will be visible on the top side of the fabric and the rest will be visible on the bottom side of the fabric. And different stitch, different stitch types are used for different purposes. Now this table gives an idea that different stitch class and there are subgroups. So, in stitch class 100, which is chain stitch with one needle thread, there are five subgroups and their numbers are 101 to 105. Then stitch class 200, hand stitch subgroups are, that could be five different subgroups within it. So, it, it details of these stitch classes will be also available in the standard textbooks. Lock stitch, we have 16 subgroups are there. Then stitch class 400, multi thread chain stitch, 11 subgroups, 500 over lock stitch, 22 subgroups could be there and 600 covering chain stitch, there are 10 different subgroups. So, each of them is having different varieties also. So, there are six different classes and each class that are subgroups. So, we have so many different types of you know, seams which will be available and there are different purposes to use them. Now, when it comes to seams, seam must enable a uniform load transfer from one part of the fabric to the other. Seams are most weakest link regarding strength and media permeability because there is a chance of perforations while I am stitching, there is a chance of hole formations, stitching can also lead to damage to the fabrics. So, one has to remember that stitching will, re will lead to perforations in the fabric. Stitching can lead to damage to the fabric. If the stitching is not done properly, then there is a chance of seam puckering, a kind of defect that we get also when we join two pieces of fabrics. 
but anyway when you bring the two fabric together and then finally we stitch them how do the two fabrics which are going to join how do you really bring them together how do you place them that is what seam is all about so there are different ways of placing these fabrics that we will see seam must have properties similar to the base material breaking force and elongation at the seam and the seam places are important mechanical properties of the technical fabrics so whenever we are trying to sew the fabrics we are making perforations and it is a source of weakness when the two fabrics are joined together so the strength of the seam generally we expect it to be less than the strength of the fabrics and uh, this becomes more important in the case of technical fabrics when you have to join them because you have to go for large pieces of fabrics and obviously we cannot weave such large pieces on the loom loom has certain you know uh, capability that it can produce fabric of a certain width and certain length but then if we want to make something which is much larger than that then obviously we have to join the fabrics especially so in the case of technical fabrics and how do you join the technical fabrics without compromising the strength of the fabric the joining area is a source of weakness as far as strength is concerned and therefore uh, people are studying this aspect that is what is the the breaking force and elongations of the seams and how much is differs from the base fabric anyway there are different types of seams and ss means superimposed seam then we have lapped seam bound seam flat seam ornamental seam and edge finishing seam so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 six different types of seam what matters is aesthetic appeal is very important because there are certain garments where people will buy the garment their buying decision depends upon the the aesthetic value of the garment and there the aesthetic should not be disturbed by the defects in the seam and hence aesthetic appeal of the seam it can also enhance the aesthetic appeal of a of a garment because the stitching line the color of thread that you choose it can enhance the aesthetic appeal in some cases then the strength is important the durability of the seam is important comfort in wear the seam should not lead to any discomfort especially for the garments which are used next to skin this should not abrade and create rashes so that way that's why otherwise also uh, it should not be too stiff so because that will create discomfort to the wearer then ease of assembly is also another important thing and finally the cost part also is important so seam now we will go superimpose seam formed by superimposing the edges of one fabric over the other so two fabrics are placed side by side one on the top of the other and then we sew them that is what is superimposed seam very simple type of seam then comes lap seam it is formed by overlapping two or more plies of fabric 
and seaming with one or more rows of stitches that here there are two rows of stitches. So, you can have one rows of stitches also or maybe three rows of stitches also. It has 101 different subgroups within it. They are mostly used in panels, in sail, in jeans, this kind of seams will be seen. Then bound seam as it is shown here, formed by folding a binding strip. So, you see there is a strip like this which is going like this, like a U shape it is taking and covering the edges of the fabric and then we are sewing it. So, the edge of the fabric which is will not be visible because it is covered by the, the other one which is taking a U shape. So, this strip is going to cover the edge. So, formed by folding a binding strip over the edge of the ply or the plies here the ply means basically fabric and seaming the binding strip and the body material with one or more rows of stitches. It has 18 different types subgroups. I mean there are many ways to know where bound seams, seams could be there. Then flat seam, in the flat seam fabric edges do not overlap. We can see the two fabrics the two fabrics are broad like this is one fabric and this is another fabric. Both of the edges will be in the same plane and then we will join them by a row of stitches that is seen here. This is the stitches. So, the fab in, in all these cases what happens when you place one fabric on the top of the other. In the seam area the thickness goes up. The thickness may become double when two fabric pieces like in this case two fabric pieces are joined together. Therefore, in this region the thickness has become double. Here how many the thickness will be triple. So, it will be very thick the seam area is going to be very thick and it will be very hard as well. Now, there are products where we do not want any bulk and stiffness. So, the two fabrics as it is shown here fabric A and fabric B they are placed side by side, but there is no overlap between them. The edges are brought very close to each other and then they are joined together by these zigzag seams. These are mostly used in knitted garments worn near the skin as the seam is free from bulk and the seam is not going to be very stiff in nature. So, therefore, they are mostly suitable for next to skin garments. Then comes seam type ornamental seam. They are produced with one or more straight rows of stitches and it has different eight different sub subgroups. and edge finishing seam. We do not want to see the edges where the otherwise the threads may be fraying. So, produced by turning the edge of the fabric and stitching the turned portion as it is shown where that it, it is turned and then the stitch line is here. So, the edge from the edge threads will not going to come out. it has 32 different subgroups. That is how so many different types could be there. So, these are the you know uh, six different types of seams. So, stitch and seam they go together for stitching we need then the thread also. So, different type of stitching is there we can use different types of thread and then we can have different types of seams that is the way we bring the two fabric next to each other and then we try to sew them. 
So, these are very, this very briefly I am just giving an idea ki how this teaching is done and one has to choose the right kind of you know seam or a specific end use. Superimposed seams are most common, they are durable and fabric edges is to be overlocked to prevent fraying, but they have low strength and they are mostly used for normal garments. Lap seam as the strongest seam and they are used as side seams of denim jeans because denims are going to supposed to be very tough material, very thick fabrics are used. So, and it can be used for parachute fabrics, tent joinings, tent fabrics when you want to join them, we need strong seam and the left configuration is what is used. On the top of it obviously, we have to go for very strong threads also and we can have one line of sewing line or two or multiple sewing line depending upon the what is the final end use of that particular material, how strong that we want to make. But we have to also remember that the more puncture we create, the possibility of damage is also there. Then bound seams makes a very neat and clean finish, raw edges will not ravel because they are completely encased. That is the purpose of bound seam and they are used in luggage, hemming and binding of fabric edges, neatening, flat seam we have already discussed used mostly for knitted fabrics, flat in appearance and no bulk formations, they are generally soft also. So, these are the you know, some characteristics and the possible use is stated here. So, now we come to the bonding techniques. So, for bonding we can use adhesives or we can use thermal energy or we can use solvent. Now, let us discuss about adhesion, adhesives. The theory of adhesion is absorptions and wetting, diffusions, mechanical interlocking and chemical bonding. Addition by adhesive itself is a another big area and uh, obviously, we will be only touching the surface of the adhesives here. Some very basics which we need to know that is going to be discussed. The adsorption theory. Here adhesion occurs due to bond formations between adhesive and the substrate molecules resulting attractive forces, secondary or van der Waal forces. For these forces to develop the respective surfaces must not be separated more than several angstrom. So, it is happening at the molecular level. Intimate contact is established if the adhesive wet the surface well. So, this is a very important part that the surface has to be completely wetted by the adhesive. Poor wetting results in adhesive breaches, that is, the adhesive does not flow properly over the substrate and the flow property of the adhesive will depend upon the surface tension or the viscosity of the adhesive and the surface energy of the substrate. Poor weighting results in adhesive bridges over the surface perturbation. If the surface is rough, in that case adhesive bridges may form on the valleys and crevices on the substrate 
and their air may remain trapped and therefore, the adhesion will not be good. So, this is all because of poor wetting that is most important. So, wetting has to be seen. So, wetting we can check on the basis of contact angle measurements we know that whether a particular liquid can wet a surface well or not we can judge it on the basis of contact angle. The point is that it has to be completely it has to wet the surface. So, that it flows every nooks and corners of the fabric, even if the fabric is rough, it is not necessary. So, many times the fabric that we are going to join together, join, not necessarily it has to be truly very smooth. There could be roughness on the fabric surface depending upon what is the count of yarn you have used or what is the type of um, weave that we have, uh, we have chosen. It all depends upon that the type of weave, the yarn that we chosen, what is the roughness of the yarn itself. Many things decide the roughness of the fabric, where yarn plays a role, the ends and peak density plays a role and the construction parameter plays a role, the type of weave will play a role. Poor weighting basically means less area of contact and hence poor strength. That is very simple way of stating this. Next comes for good contact therefore, what we should do? Surface energy of the substrate is to be high and surface tension of the liquid has to be low. So, you have to choose the keeping in mind the substrate we have to choose what is the you know, adhesive that we will use and how can I bring down the surface tension of the adhesive. Surface energy of the adhesive can be lowered by adding lower surface energy based polymer or by adding wetting agent. This is what can be done in order to bring down the surface energy of the adhesive itself adhesive is the liquid which is going to flow and wet the surface and surface energy of the substrate, substrate in, the, in this case is, is, is the fabric. Sometimes not necessary that fabric has to be joined to the fabric, fabric can be joined to the leather or sometimes we need fabric to be joined to a artificial leather or to some other plastic material. So, it all depends that what are the two pieces we need to join. Anyway, surface energy of the substrate can be increased by surface treatments, which could be mechanical treatments, chemical treatments or by some energy. So, there are ways to change the surface by different means and more details will be available in other books and how to change the uh, surface energy of the substrate. Plasma treatment is one of them uh, just like and there are other techniques also by which the surface can be changed, surface can be modified by chemical treatments also. There are some chemicals which will change the surface energy of a fiber or a fabric. The mechanical theory is based on this fact is that the surface of the solid material constitutes peaks and valleys. The fabric surface we know it is not like a glass that it is very very smooth. It is it is having lot of no uh, peaks and valleys there is some undulation is there always the adhesive penetrates the cavities on the surface displace the trapped air at the interface and mechanically lock onto the surface 
the arbitrary will flow and get into all those cavities and they will replace the uh, displace the air which is there and then therefore, they can mechanically lock themselves. So, increase in roughness as to adhesion by increasing the total contact area between adhesives and the adherent. So, that is what is possible. Only thing with some cases we have to be very careful so that the air should not remain trapped. So, this is basically a mechanical addition theory. If the adhesive does not wet the substrate properly, roughening can increase the amount of air trapped as I was mentioning that this is, is another important part we have to see because many a time we have to see we may not get the right strength that we expect when we go for adhesive joint and then we need to really study why we are not getting the strength that we are expecting. So, roughening may lead to this kind of problem that is the trapping of the air that could be micro pockets of air where it will remain and all those air pockets is a source of weakness and therefore, it will reduce the interfacial strength. There are certain technical products where the strength of the joint is very, very important. and one side product is aerostat products. Diffusion theory is addition occurs due to diffusion of the molecules from one material to the other across the interface creating entangled network of molecules. So, the diffusion of the molecules and creating an entanglement at the molecular level. Earlier we are discussing entanglement between fibers to join the two ends of a span yarn that we create entanglement through splicing techniques. Here we have to go we are going for the molecular level entanglement and that is only because of diffusion process. Both adhesive and substrate are to be polymeric in nature with long chain molecules in this case. That is cannot be the one is metal and other one is polymer, then diffusion will not occur. Both has to be polymeric in nature and materials must be mutually soluble. Diffusion molecules must be mobile material must be at very high temperature to form a melt or dissolve in solvent solution. So, that I can use a solvent which will melt both the polymers at the interface and then will create the molecules to diffuse into each other forming an entangled network of molecules or we can melt the material at the interface and the molten polymer molecules become mobile, they now try to diffuse into each other and therefore, now they can form a very entangled network of molecules. That is what is also this theory is also there. It is applicable to solvent or heat welding of thermoplastic substrates. Thermoplastic substrates are basically all polymeric material like polyester or nylon, these materials are all polymeric materials which are thermoplastic in nature. The other one is chemical bonding theory, where a chemical bond will be established, presence of mutually reactive groups in the substrate and the adhesive these two strong chemical bond so adhesive containing reactive functional groups such as hydroxyl groups or carbonyl groups tend to adhere to substrate containing similar groups so it's a chemical bond formations 
those who have studied the, the chemistry of dyeing, there we have all know that all the dye molecules are attached to the fibers because of the chemical bonds. So, these such kind of bonds can be formed and that could be can lead to very strong ultimately bond formations and there is strong bonding between the two material. So, so there are basically four different theories of adhesion. Now, adhesive types technology wise some adhesives could be water based, solvent based, non volatile or hot melt and base polymer wise it could be acrylic, styrene block copolymers, natural rubber, polyamide, polyester, polyurethane, vinyls. The applications are and laminatic adhesives for wise or pressure sensitive adhesives could be there, contact adhesive, paste dot adhesives and other. So, we can classify according to technology, according to base polymer or according to end use applications. These are the different ways of classifications. Now, adhesive bonding advantages and disadvantages. Advantages are provides large trace bearing area, provides excellent toughness and abrasion resistance, suitable for moisture resistance barrier, can be made thermally and electrically conductive, joins all shapes and thickness, join any combination of similar or dissimilar material, that is fabric with plastic or with metal pieces or maybe with foam we can join. Less expensive and faster than the other methods. Disadvantages are surface must be carefully clean as we are discussing that there should not be a trap. So, surface has to be very very clean there should not be uh, any contamination on the surface chemically treated to lower surface energy if required. Long curing time, many a times we reduce the surface energy through chemical treatment. Like polyester fiber has to be you know uh, make good bond with the I think with the rubber in the case of uh, uh, your uh, tires. So, there the surface of the polyester fiber is treated chemically in order to create a strong bond with the tire material. Generally long curing time could be there, this is disadvantage you need time for curing. Limitation on upper continuous operating temperatures 175 to 200 degree centigrade. Heat and pressures are required, inspection of finished joints are difficult. Useful life depends upon service environment. Application areas are dissimilar material like textile with metals, with rubbers, with plastics, foam material, with wood, ceramic, glass, this can be used. When textile has to be joined with them, then adhesive bonding is very preferred, we cannot really sew them, sewing is not possible. Heat sensitive material, thermoplastics, magnetic, electrical material, these are the examples. Laminated structures if we want, example the sheet laminates, office partitions, auto and aircraft interior parts, they are all basically laminated structures. Structural application, civil engineering industries, geotextiles, this can be used, sealed seams, rain wear and container seams. So, rain wear we 
the seams that we create there because the puncture holes could be there we have to completely seal them by some adhesive so that there is no chance of water to penetrate through those punctures. Nowadays we can use adhesive or you can put adhesive tape also. Temporary fastening surgical and pressure sensitive tapes are there. So, there are so many applications of this and some more common adhesive applications are stated here. Application areas like apparel accessories, lamination in clothing and fashion accessories, common substrate or fabric to fabric, fabric to foam or fabric to metallized film, requirements adhesives are wash and dry cleaning. Resistance is important because these accessories which are there in the apparels they might go for uh, washing possibilities are there or dry cleaning could be there. So, they have to be resistant to this the adhesive that we are going to use. They should give a soft hand and they should give you, give you good elongation because they have to be uh, added to the clothing material fabric which has got some elongation this should not stiffen. Upholstery is another application areas, home furnishing, tarpaulins, covers, industrial blanket, this is a technical textile area, pressure sensitive applications. So, examples are given, common substrates are also stated here and requirements in the adhesive. So, the keeping in mind the application area, what do you require, require in the adhesive, the properties that we require few of them only are stated. Home furnishing, wash and dry cleaning will be dry cleaning resistance is important. Though home furnishing materials are not really washed so frequently, but still whenever we want to wash them or we want to go for dry cleaning, the adhesive should not create problem with us. It should have some resistance to water and in case dry cleaning some other chemicals are used, we should be able to resist that. So, adhesive selection, what are the considerations? One is properties of the substrate that we have to keep in mind because adhesive must weight the substrate. So, whether the substrate is a cotton fabric or is it a polyester cotton fabric or it is a 100 percent polyester or nylon, what type of material it is and the properties of that material. So, substrate is that that is important and adhesive must have a lower surface energy than the substrate. So, we have to know if it is a nylon, what is the surface energy of nylon? Now, we have to go for selections of the adhesive which will be able to weight the nylon surface or it could be polypropylene also. Most of the soft luggage are made from either polypropylene or nylons and there the adhesive may be used. Joint design load, adhesives are better when joints are designed so that they are under shear. So, that is we have to keep in mind that on shear they are much better. Surface environment we have to keep in mind, environmental condition especially humidity and temperature can affect the performance of the adhesive. Physical properties of the adhesive, the toughness, flexibility, uh, is impact resistance, thermal shock, whether it is brittle or not such kind of properties of the adhesive also we have to keep in mind while we are trying to decide which adhesive I should choose for a given applications. So, these different considerations and, the, and their importance are stated. Solvent based adhesives are stated here, cellulose acetate, 
cellulose nitrate, acrylic, polyurethane, neoprene, these are the solvent based adhesives. Special characteristics, cellulose acetate, water clear, very, very clear, more heat resistance, but less water resistance, cellulose nitrate. So, characteristics are stated here one by one and some typical use that is also given. Acrylic, good low temperature properties, poor heat resistance, excellent resistance to UV that we have to remember that this is the special property that acrylic has, it has highly resistance to UV and clear and the this adhesive is colorless. So, base fabric whatever color is there, if I put an acrylic adhesive on the top of it, it will the original color will be visible to us. It is used in textile, paper, plastics. So, adhesives, special characteristics and use are given. This will help a, a designer to choose. Similarly, water borne adhesives also we have given what are the special characteristics of it and what are the adhesives, natural labor, polyvinyl acetate, vinyl acrylic. So, it is a there are so many adhesives which are water borne adhesives. They are special characteristics is also stated and some use where they are used is also stated here. Halt melt adhesive similarly low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, polyamide, polyester, polyurethane, characteristics and use. So, you have to, it is not that one can, you need not, you know, there is no need to remember all of them. These are, should be available as a designer and this could be a type of data bank and whenever the designer is going to look for some adhesives, he can consult these tables and can make a preliminary selection and then if he wants to know more about it, obviously one has to refer to standard textbooks where much more details will be available about adhesives, the way they are applied, what are the precautions to be taken during applications, what properties you would expect all those details will be available in other books. Here we are just trying to give you a very brief you know, account of the adhesive that we that is adhesives which are available and where they are generally used. Now we come to the welding techniques, hot wedge welding heat sealing, ultrasonic, dielectric welding, infrared welding and laser welding. So, we have ultrasonic welding, dielectric welding, infrared welding, laser welding, hot wedge welding, heat sealing. So, these are the different welding techniques where again the textile materials are welded together. Now, hot wedge welding used for seaming non ovens, a combination of heat and pressure and speed to melt the material which is required. So, use heat and pressure and speed to melt the materials and then where we cool them and there will be a, a joint will be created. This kind of seam strength sometimes becomes 70 percent of the material strength. The heat sealing which is there is used precise heat and pressure heat and pressure at the sealing point results in the formation of fused portion somehow we have to apply heat and we have to take the heat to a level so that the polymer melts. 
once it melts then we have to now cool it down there will be formation of fused ends and there will be a bonding between the two material. So, heat sealing and hot wedge welding suitable for fabric laminations heat sealing. Ultrasonic and laser welding in ultrasonic joining ultrasonic energy which is high frequency is used to produce low amplitude vibration. The vibration produces heat at the point at the joint interface. So, the advantage is at the interface the heat will be generated is not heat has to be separate from the top or from the bottom. It will soften the thermoplastic material and weld formation on cooling. As we cool it down, the weld will form. Fast welding 0.1 to 1 second time it takes uses automotive, medical, and packaging industry. Very, very fast. Laser welding the source of heat is the laser. The important part is laser absorber material, which is a low viscosity liquid that dries up rapidly and leave a thin deposit on the surface of the textile is used. So, laser absorbing material has to be used. Then assembly of seam under clamping pressure. Now, irradiation of the seam with near infrared laser beam at a wavelength of 940 nanometer melt the material where absorber exists and create the weld. So, wherever this absorber is there at the interface, this is going to finally melt. So, these are basically kind of targeted area will, will be only be melted. That advantage is there with this and it is clean and very fast. Then comes radio frequency and infrared welding. The radio frequency use of high frequency electromagnetic energy to generate heat in the material by virtue of their electrical properties. Normally used for joining films or thin sheet since strong electric field capable to melt the material can only be achieved when the electrode and the weld welded part is 1.5 millimeter and less the distance between them has to be very very less than 1.5 mm. So, very thin fabrics can only be you know, joined here they can be only be used here the thickness should be less than 1.5 mm. If I take two thick fabrics then radio frequency welding devices cannot be used uses sealing thin sheets that is why because this is very less. So, in thin sheets and films like black bags, disposable clothing and there could be some more use where these are used. And infrared is IR radiation is supplied by heated metal or IR lamps. Absorbed IR portion generates heat that melts the polymer. Now, different welding techniques and their advantages are stated here. Heat sealing, short weld times, suitable for discrete parts areas, flexible, low cost, low energy consumption, impermeable same like that, these are that advantages. Hot air wedge welding, applicable to thick and thin materials, heat can be applied directly to the joint line, consistent performance, low cost, and impermeable seam fusible frame can be melted, air jet blows away the contaminants in the case of hot air because the air is blowing 
So, it will contaminants will be flying away that will not be there in the case of heat sealing where there is no air. Ultrasonic advantages are stated, short dwell time, high welding speed. So, you have a list of advantages, I am not going to read all of them. You can read yourself, some advantages are there, they are all stated here. So, depending upon the advantages, the cost and the kind of material that you are going to process, the productivity, people chooses their different types of welding techniques. Disadvantages are also there, each, each and every technique. So, you should not only see the advantage, you should also look at the disadvantages while we are making a choice. So, heat sealing relies on conduction to heat the material. So, conductivity of the material is the important. If the material is highly insulative in nature, then obviously it will take more time. Not suitable therefore, for thick material, material with low thermal conductivity. Hot air wedge welding, air temperature cannot be changed quickly, that is the difficulty. And seam designs are restricted to overlap. Ultrasonic particles of flash are sometimes generated. Vibration may affect sensitive components which are around. Ultrasonic particle of flash are generated as stated already. Radio frequency restricted to limited range of materials polyurethane PVC fibers or coating. PVC emits volatile organic compounds when heated, risks from high frequency radiation to the operator. Laser welding, one part of the joining material should be transparent to the infrared laser. So, one part of the joining material has to be transparent. So, every Oh no, type of welding has advantage, disadvantage. So, we have to strike a balance while we are thinking of choosing one of them. The last one is the adhesive film. So, this is also very much popular nowadays that adhesive films can be used. And on the left hand side of the table, we find the list of fabrics and what are the corresponding adhesive film that can be used for them are also stated here. So, we have polyester, nylon, acrylic, acetate, aramide, cotton, wool, elastic fabrics, there is lycra based fabrics are there and what are the different adhesive films which are available or which will suit this kind of fabrics are also stated. These films are very, very thin 25 to 125 micron and they can be used depending upon. So, you can see that it is not that uh, arbitrarily they can be chosen. If the fabric is acrylic fabric, we have to use polyamide films. Similarly, for cotton, we have a wide choice. We can use polyurethane, polyamide, polyolefin, polyester, vinyl, film, any one of them can be used and through this film also we can you know, join the fabrics or we can seal the seams depending upon our you know, own whatever is the requirement. These adhesive films are also nowadays available and they can be used. So, with this, this different joining techniques which are practiced in the uh, in the textile for textile material that we have discussed. So, as a designer you will you have an idea ki what are the various options that you have and then you have to keeping in mind the application 
the type of material being used and the user environment in which this product is going to be used, the cost you have to keep in mind also. So, material, cost, user environment, the service life that one demands or expects, all these one has to keep in mind on the basis of that you have to find out what is the right option for you. Sometimes you may have 3, 4 different options, all of them may be applicable and in that case you can have 1 option, 2 ops, option, 2 option, 3 option, 4 depending upon the cost or the kind of production technology that uh, a company is having accordingly he has to select also. Not that every company will be having all types of technologies because in order to apply these you know uh, techniques that we have discussed, you need machines, you need equipment, you need manpower. So, it is not that everything will be available with any industry. So, so many factors one has to keep in mind and then decide what to choose. Okay, with this we conclude, thank you. Thank you.